All right, guys, so something that a lot of you probably have started to pick up on is that some of these managers of state lands when it comes to grazing animals are also ranchers themselves. They make some of the best rangeland managers. So uh, we're gonna go today to visit Chad Kramer's private herd, Kramer Buffalo, and it's right outside the park here. In fact, sometimes tourists get his bison confused with the park bison because they're literally across a fence line from each other. But this is a private herd and it's, uh, it's Chad's private, private enterprise. jump in with me or I mean you'd be all right in this to get out but they're about a mile up north here and stuff all right we could we could follow just follow okay yeah that way we've I'll, got our uh, stuff let me grab a couple buckets of cubes or a bucket of cubes and then uh yeah we'll just go up this section line trail here and stuff so all right okay sounds good right now the last few years I've pulled my bulls so I got my bulls out in this pasture but okay. the cows are all up north here but okay. we'll go up there first okay Um, Chad Kramer, uh, owner of Kramer Buffalo Company. Uh, been raising bison for just over 30 years now. Um, looked into it a couple of years before I finally took the plunge and, and bought some animals. But I've been a native of Southwest Minnesota. Grew up on a corn and soybean farm there. And we raised some beef cattle, uh, finishing, and then also some hogs. But was always more involved in the livestock end of it but once I got interested in bison in college and that uh, quickly intrigued me and very quick became my passion it led me uh, I like to say down the buffalo trail I guess and ended up managing an operation in central South Dakota for a few years then went to central Colorado for about a year and a half and then ended up back here in western South Dakota in the Black Hills. We can leave this one open. I told Charlie that after all of this trekking around, I'm gonna have to do just a, a fun reel of people opening and closing gates. <laughs> yeah. How many times people have to That's... go through their gates? When I moved west uh, to the central South Dakota there, it's like you realize pretty quick, it's like gates are a fact of life if you're going to be in this. So if you don't want to deal with them, you better make a change. <laughs> so. Our operation is primarily cow-calf. Um, we lease, we operate on all leased ground, so I have two major leases um, and then a couple other smaller smaller acreages, but it's all contiguous and total about 1,800 acres and we'll run between 100 to 140 animal units um, per season depending on precipitation and forage conditions and such. But um, so primarily cow-calf selling calves every year, but I do continue and uh, I direct market about 15 to 20 carcasses a year. So um, mostly local, a uh, few of them I ship to folks, friends of friends that have found us over the years. Um, I field harvest my animals now. I've been doing that for over 10 years. So I do a couple at a time and work with the local processor. Basically doing the same, the protocol that's out there for, for USDA or state inspected field harvest. So, but I feel that uh, field harvesting, in my experience over the years, is the least stressful way to to harvest that animal. There's, there's no stress of capturing them, loading them, hauling them. Um, unloading at the processing facility and such it's I tell people uh, when I get into discussions with them about it and how I do it I said you know I 
more than 50% of the time when I walk up to that animal, it's got that last bite of grass clenched in its teeth. And give thanks for, for what it's it's providing for us. And and then uh, you bleed it and, and away we go and, and get it loaded and get it to the processor. So um, it's just, I found that's, in my opinion, the best method to do it. But yeah, it's, uh, I graze year round. We don't supplemental feed as far as uh, supplemental hay and stuff. I do use some dehydrated alfalfa cubes for occasionally and that's just for ease of what I like to say, habituating them for moving them different paddocks and stuff. But we have about uh, eight to 10 different paddocks right now that we, we rotationally graze through, through over the course of the season. Um, a couple of times through those and and yeah, um, I'm also the herd manager at Custer Park, and so a lot of what I've learned in the last 20 plus there's year, I've tried to apply to my own operation on a smaller scale. In my mind, what it basically boils down to is, you know, we're over 150 years ago, we didn't have fences, now we have you know, private property and we have fences. So they they have to be managed. And that doesn't matter what size it is, whether it's 10 acres or if it's, you know, a million acres like Yellowstone is out there. The fact is, is that there is a boundary, whether it has a fence on it or not. When they cross that boundary and they're on somebody else's property that doesn't want them there then you have you have a concern so you know it would be great to to go back to that and see those um visions from over 150 years ago but the fact is today is is uh doesn't matter on what scale it is it's going to be pretty tough to do that so i guess the way i look at it is how do i as a steward how do i manage this animal whether it's a 50 acre property in the eastern part of the U.S. or you get out um, in the western part here where you know you're looking at tens of thousands of acres and so you know there's there's a lot of different ways to manage them but in my mind what it boils down to is you're gonna have to manage them to a certain level and individually you need to decide what that level is going to be. For myself personally, it's it's not something I want to ramp up to a lot larger scale for myself. So <laughs> So I've, we've kept the bull Henry with all the cows the last three years, but cats can yeah, I had him, we had him in the corral for about six weeks because Susie wouldn't let me put him out here with these guys. She's like, no, they'll kill him. Um, I said, he's got 320 acres if he can't get away. But he thinks he's pretty big stuff. Nothing, Mofi. No, no, no. Shh. Go on. Shh. Shh. 